This time I have a Sony CDP CX355. This is a 300 disc CD changer and the complaint on this one is it stops. This one actually led me down the wrong path initially. I thought I had it, but well, we'll find out. This is a Sony 300 disc CD changer. Complaint on this one is it plays for a while and then it stops. So open the top up, I'm gonna load some discs and uh, fire it up and see whether it'll stop. We'll put some discs in this unit. And a letter rip. Probably gonna mess up their custom file if they Got a custom file on here. Well, it shouldn't, but it might. Apparently this unit is put on shuffle. So we're gonna throw it on the shuffle and let it go. All discs, play. Okay, it's already skipping. Of course, that's uh, track is at track 18, so this is the track. So it's quite a ways out. Uh, we're already skipping, so we may have a bad pickup on this. You see, it's starting to skip like crazy already. You notice that this one is uh, must be an earlier machine. There's no shroud around it to keep the discs in place. Like the machines I have have a have a shroud that goes over top covers up the discs so that they can't spill out if you turn it on its side for example. Well this is an earlier machine it obviously doesn't have that. But it certainly is having trouble playing this disc. It could be a bad laser or it could be even the spindle motor that's acting up. That was a CDR that was playing, but it's not one that's in bad shape. This is a solid effects disc. This one's a stamped disc. Cats are fighting. That's not the cat. That just so happens to be a sound effect of a cat, <laughs> I think. Yeah, it's a sound effect of a kitten. My own responded to that by hollering back. All right, I think we've got our answer on this. It just aired out on uh, CDR. It just aired out on this CDR. It's 
gonna try it again. It's gonna it's gonna try to read. And it's not gonna read it. It's gonna it's gonna air out. So I think we're probably looking at a weak pickup on this one. There we go, you see? So I think this one we have a weak pickup. I'm just gonna try cleaning off the lens, but I pretty sure on this one we're gonna need to find a new pickup for this. And it was skipping on the other CDR. It's gonna it's just gonna continue to try. And I didn't look at what came up on the display, but I bet it's gonna say error. Let's look on the display and see what it shows as it's trying to read this disc. You can hear it trying to focus. And then nothing reads. And now it looks like it's tried to read it three times, it's going to move on to the next disc. Is it going to read this one? This is a stamped disc. So it should read this one. But this CD player should play CDRs. There it is. She's going to read that one. This should play CDRs, no problem. This is not that old a machine. So the fact it's not reading a CDR that plays fine on other machines is a good indication that the laser pickup itself is getting weak. I will move it to the other CDR. Actually, that's not the other CDR. It's another stamp disc. We'll move it one more disc over here. Uh, this one. disc it wouldn't read as you can see it's not like it's badly scratched or anything this disc should read fine but it's one of the darker discs Reading. Is it is it playing? Let's see if it'll play. Now it's gonna play it. It didn't play it before.
I'm just observing how it's loading. Well, now it's working, but it wasn't before. It wasn't reading that disc before. Yeah, so very sensitive. I can just literally lightly touching this. give you an idea how sensitive it is, I'll just put my flashlight down on the bench. Okay, I'm not even tapping the unit itself, I'm tapping the bench. It is sitting firmly on the bench. I just so happened that I have a KSS 213B that I pulled out of a, a deck a unit that worked, that, but one of the gears was broken. So this one here I know works, and I, of course I put the jumper on before I removed it. So we're gonna swap out this laser and see how it works. First we need to get to the actual pickup itself. So there's a couple of screws that have to come out that hold the bracket in place. Some screws in the back. And the base here. Lift out the clamp and the pickup is mounted on this bracket. So lift out the clamp. Clamp sits on a pin here. 
It's got a spring on it as well. Clamp sits in behind that spring. And there's a washer that goes over here. Put that back on there so it doesn't get lost. Let the pickup out and we can unplug it from the main board. You can either unplug it back here or on top of the, the uh, servo board. We'll just unplug that one there. Okay, now the uh, pickup is ready to come out. Before I remove the pickup, of course, I have to put the shorting block in. And um, this motor also could be a contributing factor. These, the uh, spindle motors did cause problems. So it's either the pickup or the, the spindle motor. The fact that this is so sensitive to any type of shock at all kind of indicates so. I think that it's the, uh, the pickup that's at fault. If I squeeze the two little tabs together on the gear, I can pop out the sled gear but I don't have to take the mechanism so far apart to change this sled gear is now released and it should pop out nope missed it there we go remove the sled gear now the optical pickup is free all I need to do is release it, which I can do by pushing a tab. And uh, I may have to remove this block. Probably have to remove the whole entire mechanism, take out the four screws here, just to make it a little bit easier to get at because the plastic is going to be in the way. Okay, now I can release the, the rail and push it out of the way, the guide rail. It's not a lubrication problem, this has got, got lots of lubricant on it. So now the guide rail is out of the way. I can now lift the optical pickup out and I want to put the short on here before I unplug it. So I've got the soldering iron ready. because these optical pickups are so sensitive. So the short's in place, so I don't have to worry about damaging the pickup now when I unplug it. Although I suspect it's already damaged, but we just unplug it like that. And get the new one and plug the new one in. Once the new one's plugged in, I can remove the solder bridge from this one. Set the pickup in place. Slide the rail in. that so it's locked in place I can put the control gear back in and it just pushes down snaps into place and now I can put this back into the base four screws back in and reassemble the unit and see if I have any different results.
Incidentally, this model does not use a toothed belt like some of the later ones use, and the belt is right there, and it is easy to replace on this one. Okay, um, pickup unit back in place. It goes in like, like this. We're going to plug the ribbon cable back in. Set the pickup in place, and it goes into the back. The little pin goes in to the back track here. Not the closest one because, of course, it needs to clamp forward. Incidentally, that switch is one that's a good one to clean, so I'm going to give it a shot of cleaner while I've got it apart. This is the switch that detects whether the system is loaded or not. So it never hurts to give that switch a cleaner, a, a shot of cleaner while you've got it apart. The spring sits in this slot on the clamp, it holds the clamp in position. Now we can put the top piece on and fit the two pins, one for the clamp and one for the main uh, traverse assembly through these two holes in the bracket. Uh, it's probably a good idea before powering it up. You'll see that my the, the um, clamp is in the track there. I don't know if you can see it. You make sure that everything's lined up, that your, your clamp is in the proper track. And it's probably not a bad idea before powering it up if you just turn the uh, mechanism by hand and put it through its paces to load a disc and make sure that everything Clamps properly and that nothing jams before applying power. So now it loads the disc and then the clamp clicks in place without anything sticking. Once you're sure that everything's going to work and not jam, only then is it safe to apply power because we don't want to break any plastic gears on these machines. Let's see if it'll work. Now remember this is the disc that wouldn't play before, so let's see if it's going to play. And how sensitive is it when I tap the, the countertop? Remember before, I could just tap it and we'd skip.
Not skipping. Okay. If I hit it hard, it will, but that's to be expected. But the normal... So I'm going to let this play and uh, see how it runs. But New pickup. That's the old one. New pickup in. I guess we'll find out. But that's how you change the pickup on one of these 300 disc changers. It's not that difficult to do. I'm going to close this one off now as saying it's complete even though I haven't finished testing it yet because this is going to be under test now for a while with the little back cover on here. I'm going to be testing this thing for the better part of the afternoon just to make sure it's okay. I will revise the video if there's a problem. some of the other tracks on this disc. Well, crap. One of my tweeters is blown. Listen to this. My right tweeter. No, no dribble. Enough tweeter. One of my PSB speakers, the tweeter's gone. Must be this crappy Akai amplifier that's driving it that blew it. I mean, I don't turn this thing up very often. I never turn it to the point where it's clipping, but uh, as impressive as this thing looks, it's really not that powerful. It's only 40 watts per channel. It doesn't take much to get to maximum power. all it's got. I mean, it sounds okay, but it doesn't have much power, and it kind of looks like this low-power amplifier may have uh, taken out one of my speakers, which is not making me very happy. I guess I'll have to uh, take the speaker apart and see if I can find a new tweeter for it, or just put another pair of speakers up, as I certainly have enough speakers here I can replace it with. You think I have it fixed, right? So did I. But here, we're into it for about an hour and a half, and all of a sudden, it started acting up again. No, not now. It's still playing at this point. It should have played for a while, and then it stopped playing, and it started doing the same thing again. It started chucking and unchucking discs that wasn't spinning. Put my finger in the back here. The motor servo drive IC is hot as fire. So what's happened is the motor drive IC has failed. It's probably a short in the motor the motor itself probably shorted out and was it took out the drive IC either either the sled motor or the because uh, the sled motor is not moving either right if I turn it if I turn the uh, pickup off of its its home position it doesn't try to return home so neither the sled motor or the um, actual spindle motor is turning yet the IC is hot as fire I'll get my little I'll get my um, little thermal camera and we'll take a look at it on the thermal camera. I'm thinking it, it's it's probably the spindle, either the spindle motor or the sled motor itself has a point where it shorts and it's taken out the IC or at least damaged the IC. I'm sure the IC itself is shot. I don't know whether I've got one of those either. I'll have to look and see 
whether I've got a board for it because getting the IC itself is probably going to be a, 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 a tall order. But let me grab my thermal camera. We'll just take a look and see how hot it's getting. I can feel heat when I put my finger on it. I can feel heat so I know that the IC is getting hot and it's getting quite warm. Okay, so we got the thermal camera going here. Let's turn this thing on and see what happens. Oh yeah, you can see it. See the ch chip getting red hot? Right in here? You can see it right in there. That chip is getting really, really warm and it shouldn't be getting that hot. There's no way that that chip should be glowing white hot like that. Like that's throwing off a ton of heat. That chip is bad, I'm afraid. That's what the cause of this one is. It's a bad chip. But ultimately, it's going to be a bad motor that caused that to fail. Guaranteed, it's a bad motor that caused that chip to fail. And there's our problem on this one. So, I guess for this one, in order to complete this one, I'm going to have to try to find either the IC, well, I'm gonna to have to find a motor as well, because there's no point in changing the IC if it's a short and a motor, and this CD player has lots and lots and lots of hours on it. Uh, get a bad motor, it's gonna knock out another IC, simple as that put a new motor in, IC is going to fail. So, there we go. That's as far as we can go on this one today until I find either a new board and a motor or maybe an entire traverse. That's probably the way to go. Find an, ent and find an entire traverse, the, the board and pickup and everything that can just be slapped in this one. That will be the solution. But uh, even when I've unplugged it, you see it's got no power. It gives you an idea how hot that chip is it's still taking a while to cool down. It's got no power and it's still throwing off heat. Everything else on the board is cold, right? You can see my finger. If I go to, uh, what do we call it here? Hot cold? Rainbow hot cold? Like this thing's been unplugged for like a minute. And you can still see the thermal signature from it. Go to white hot. You can still see the chip is warm. It's warmed the whole entire board up around it. Go back to the rainbow hot cold. I was going to power it up with the thermal camera on here. Just so we can see how quick it gets hot. But I may be waiting a while for this thing to cool down. And then the process, my battery and my camera, my, my, my phone is probably going to go down pretty quick. I got an old phone that is in desperate need of a new battery. It's five years old I guess now. Yeah, I like old phones. Keep using this one until it completely dies. Okay, it looks like we're... Well, we're still throwing off some heat. But it's a little cooler than it was before. If I put this thing, if I plug this thing in Let's see what it does when I plug it in. It'll light up like a Christmas tree. There it goes. Yeah. Yeah, she's getting warm. You can see right in the middle of the chip. I'll unplug it. It's unplugged now. You can see right in the middle of the chip, it's getting hot. Now it's radiating out through the rest of the chip. It's unplugged, but it's still conducting heat. Okay, well, we know where the fault is on this one, so I guess uh, until I can find a new chip or a new board uh, with new motors, that's what we're going to have to do. I'm going to end this one now because, as I say, at this point in the game, I'm just going to pop the laser out and pop the original one back in because there's no point in leaving a, a good laser in a unit that has another fault. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one, and if we continue on this one, if I can find parts for it, We'll do another video showing the change of the parts. Thanks for watching.